So I, Allison, I agree with you that you should have happy teachers. Um, so one of the premises for Friends of Educational Excellence partnerships is that um, teachers need more support in the classroom. And so the rationale, at least first step for the organization, is to provide more resources for teachers, more human resources for teachers during the school day, in school, so the teachers can do two things more effectively that they couldn't do on their own, because it's just that. Intervention with kids that need more one-on-one -on -one attention than the teacher can provide on their own, and differentiated instruction, where the teacher can divide the class into stations or groups, and they can be adult-led with only one teacher in the classroom. They can try to do that, and I've seen teachers try to do that, separate the class into three or four stations, and they're at one, and then what's happening at the other three? So you hope they're doing what you ask them to do. But with more adults in the classroom, you can do that more effectively. So if you have more adults in the classroom, you can do intervention and differentiated instruction more effectively. So Friends of Educational Excellence is trying to provide more adults in schools to do that. And so to start out with, we said, okay, how many adults? What do the teachers need? It's really up to the teacher. Some teachers could use as many volunteers as you can give them. <coughs> They could have other adults in their classroom all day long. Some teachers will have a few, and some teachers will have none, because that's their classroom, and they're comfortable running it with just that. So this is all about supporting teachers in the way they want to be supported. But as kind of a rule, as an attempt to try to make some statement about how many volunteers do we need initially friends of educational excellence said well we want to try to provide enough volunteers so that the teachers in the school can provide at least one hour a week of additional one-on-one -on -one time to the level two yellow students, the ones that are just below proficiency according to whatever standard you want to set, right? Whatever you want to use, bye. And so we want to try to get those kids over the bar. And we want to try to do that for two reasons. One, those are the kids that are closest to, to being proficient according to some whatever level you, you stand test or, or criteria you want to use. So they'll be easier for an untrained educator volunteer to work with because those adults don't have specialized, most of them don't have specialized training to work with kids that have more severe gaps with learning disabilities or English as, as a second language or whatever. Um, the other reason we're doing this is that the school district has a terrible reputation and parents are making decisions every week based on that to move out of the city and so for the last 30 years parents and families have been moving out of the city parents that would ordinarily like to stay in the city because they like to live in the city the city has a lot of rich diversity and cultural uh, aspects to it that many people like but Every week you hear stories about families that decide because they want their kids to have a good education, they're going to move. And we want to try to turn that around. So the city school district needs a, a better reputation so parents can say, my kids will get a good education here. And I'm looking at the statistics, right? Better, for better or worse, the media reports two things by and large, what the graduation rate is from high school 
and how the kids do on the ELA and math test. And so parents look at that and they go, oh, okay, 5% of the kids in the city pass the English and math test. And in Brighton or Penfield or Greece or Chai Lai or wherever, much higher. So they conclude, and they also look at the high school graduation rate. They certainly want their kids to graduate from high school. And so they take that, those little pieces of data and they decide to move. I'm going to turn that, turn that around. So teachers need more resources to try to be more effective and be happier, right? Mm -hmm. More effective teachers. So if you look right now, Friends of Educational Excellence supports 12 elementary schools in the city. Mm -hmm. And um, so there are four schools in the 19th Ward that are supported, um, 10, 16, 29, and 44. We also support school four, which I think you would say in the south, is in the southwest. So in this area, five schools, right? If you look at, at on, uh, on average, across the 12 schools that we've got, when we're really, you know, at our peak volunteerism, um, volunteers come in generally once a week they come in, they like what they're doing, they work with kids, and on average, and we get a lot of college students that are doing their field work and whatnot, so, but on average, across all of our 500 volunteers in those 12 schools, um, they, they provide about two and a half hours a week. So if you want to provide an hour for each one of those level two yellow students, um, in those five schools in this area, if you assume that the volunteers are going to come in for about two and a half hours a week, we need about 60 more volunteers to reach that metric of an hour a week for the, just the level two yellow kids, not any of the others, right? They, where you'd like to provide support for them too. So red, the red level ones, right? Get those. So and, and you do have some volunteers that say, I want to work at <coughs> red level. Hey, hey I was a, I'm a retired special ed teacher. I know what I'm doing. I want to work with those kids. Say, great, you work with those kids, fine. Um, but, so we need about 60, 65 more volunteers just in those schools right here. So the reason I came here tonight is to find people that will work with me to go out and recruit 65 more volunteers for those schools right here and have them start working in those schools in the fall. Now, in addition to what they, they currently have. So, anybody interested in working with me to help recruit 65 more volunteers for those schools? I'll, I'll volunteer. Okay. Good. 64. Do I'll volunteer no, no, to do no. it. Yeah. I mean, volunteer to work with me. And what does that mean? That means going out to churches, community groups, activities in the neighborhood, uh, other civic and, and association organizations that will allow us to go in and just talk like this about what we're trying to achieve and the teachers need more support to be more effective um, to get people to sign up. We have a, a screening process right, to make sure that we're getting good quality uh, adults that are going to go in that are going to be effective and being volunteers in the schools. Um, and then working with the volunteer coordinators at each one of those schools to get them placed there. And so the first step is going out into the community. Now, I, you know, John um, Payne is the head of the, the 19th Ward Community Association, Education Committee, John, right? Yeah, the Education Committee, yeah, right? Education Committee. And John, you're... I sit on yeah, that committee. You're yeah. on that committee. And I you're here. So I, I've been looking for, you know, John came to me last year and he said, we want the 19th Ward Community Association to be, you know, part of Friends of Educational Excellence and we want to support the schools in the 19th Ward. I said, great. So we did it. Now, we got to make it happen. Mm -hmm. We got to make it happen. And making it happen is first step, recruiting 65 more adults to go into those schools. So I need... How many do you have now? 
Um, in just those schools, mm -hmm. it really varies widely from school to school. But I can tell you. On your last yep, yep, yep. Oh, hold on. Hold on. No, no, and I actually was going to make copies of this, but then I didn't. <laughs> so let me look. Mm. Okay. Um, April tends to be the high month. It really varies mm -hmm. month to month. Mm -hmm. you know, volunteers come and go. Uh, but April tends to be the high month, so let's look at April. All right. Okay, so in school four in April, there were 23 volunteers providing 59 hours of support a week. A week. And in a week. That's pretty good. And so in order to hit that target of one hour a week, we need, and, and if assuming they're there for two and a half hours each, we need 10 more volunteers there. And that's just getting to kind of a baseline. Um, in school 10, there were 12 volunteers providing 46 hours a week, and we need three more volunteers. Um, and again, it varies depending upon how the kids did on that ELA test. So this is all geared to the, the way I identify level two yellow kids is how they did on the last year's ELA test, which ones were categorized as level two. <coughs> and then I'm assuming a similar proportion in K to two, you know, because the test is in third, three, third, six. Um, in school 16, we need 15 more volunteers. In school 29, um, we need six more volunteers. And quite frankly, I mean, 29, uh, depending upon the results, you know, most of the kids in 29 are at level one. So, you know, that's why it's so low there. In, uh, in school 44, we need 34 more volunteers. And so, you, you know, you count all those numbers and, and you, they add up to around 60, 65. Um, and that's just kind of scratching the surface, and, and that assumes that all the volunteers would be targeted on level two yellow kits, and uh, they're not, because it's up to the teacher. Right? So we're providing more resources to the teacher. So the teacher decides how to use the volunteers, um, and so uh, we actually need more than that to probably satisfy the teacher's needs. Um, in, in some schools, when you get up, uh, it, 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 the teachers start to say, okay, I have enough, right? Um, so in the 12 schools that we support, um, School 50 has 56 volunteers in April, providing 182 hours of volunteer support a week. Um, I'm the volunteer coordinator at school. 52. So and we had 40 volunteers in that school. Um, in school 15, we had 53 volunteers providing 169 hours of volunteer time a week into school 15. In school 22, one of the other quite challenged schools, we had 48 volunteers. Um, so I'm looking to, you know, schools can, depending upon the size of the school, probably take somewhere in the uh, 40 to 70 volunteer range, you know, uh, uh, before they start saying I have enough. Um, so we need a lot more volunteers, and so I want to, you know, I'm, I'm a one-person volunteer recruitment campaign at this point. Um, Friends of Educational License is a 501c3. I have a board. We're a school partner. I have an MOA with the school district. It's, uh, mm -hmm. it's all. I've been. It's been around for four four years, mm -hmm. right? So, and right now we support these 12 schools. But the three of the 19th ward schools are are almost kind of brand new, and so they need a lot more volunteers. So I need some help. So I came here to see who wants to help. Okay, well, we've got um, Square Fair coming up um, first uh, weekend in March, I think. The 7th, I believe it is. June. 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 Hope it's not March. Hope it's not March. We're a little cold. 
Um, Square Fair? Square Fair, yes. Which it's is in the 19th Ward. It's their First big, big, big fair once a year. And we've had a table, we had a table there last year trying to recruit volunteers. But if you happen to be free that day. First um, Saturday in June? Mm hmm. So that would be June. First or second, it's Third. the sub seventh. First? Oh, oh, it's not the. Okay, that's good. So it's not. The first yeah, it must be the second. So it must, yeah, yeah. It's because the first I think is a Sunday, right? Is that right? So this is the next weekend. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's good. June like six. And um, I haven't checked with Jackie, who's the coordinator for the 19th Ward Community or Organization. She's the uh, center manager. Um, it's okay. We get a we'll, table. We'll there? try to get a make sure we get a table. I'm pretty sure we will. I mean, we had one last year. Ideally, right, and, and the, the, the concept is that it's a community school partnership model. So each of the schools has a community partner, and Friends of Educational Excellence supports those mm -hmm. community school partners. So in three of those schools, 16, 29, and 44, the community partner is the 19th Ward Community Association. Mm -hmm. In school 10, it happens to be the Rochester Educate uh, the um, Rochester Engineering Society. And uh, on the night before, on Friday night, there's a parade that's gonna that goes around part of the the neighborhood just to let people know that the fair is the next day. So, um, where's the fair? The fair is at Aberdeen Square, and the parade, I think, starts at the 19th Ward Community Association office on Thurston and goes up to Chiline and back down back Woodbine, I think. Back down to Genesee Street and then back up, unless they've changed mm -hmm. the route. It's been a couple different routes yeah. over the years. But we've had uh, some of the schools marching in the parade over the years, and I haven't kept track of what's going on this year. But Okay. Any other events? Um, <coughs> we could have a table. Uh, those are the one. That's the one that comes to mind. I'm not sure. Is there anything else that you can think of, Cecilia? Are there any block parties coming up in the summer? Yeah, there. Are, there are usually yes. there's usually one on Aberdeen has a block party, and um, we'll take a look at what we can do there. And that's on. I would imagine all these events are on the, their website. Mm -hmm. And there, there's 19th Ward. the 19th Ward, location19.org. Yeah. That's your website. Yeah. Well, that's yours. Not Th right. There's also the 19th, the 19th Ward Community Ward. Association website, which you can find some links to it on location19. Um, there's also the, um, <coughs> they've got two or three events during the course of the year that um, one of them is the, um, the convention, which they have once a year in the fall. I think it's usually November, and um, we've had a table of those things. Uh, and there's the uh, Merchant of the Year event, which uh, yeah, there's a little bit of a time be at the beginning of it where we might be able to do some recruiting or at least have somebody get up and mention that we're looking for people. A very effective uh, location for recruiting are churches. Mm -hmm. I assume that there are, there are lots of churches mm -hmm. in this neighborhood. And there's the uh, farmer's market also, which we did mm -hmm. some recruiting at last year. We had um, a table for, uh, and kind of rotated between the four schools in the neighborhood. They came and the principals of the school would be there and you know invite people to volunteer and we picked up a few from that so that's something to keep in mind okay what about churches can we organize a, a contacts at churches and get invited to yeah i haven't um, speak to been too involved with any of the church well we've got um there is a uh, group on location 19 kind of uh um forget what the name of it is right now, but it's kind of an ec ecumenical group that um, we could post some stuff on. In fact, you can always post. Um, no, I'm not interested in posting. I'm yeah. actually interested in calling the pastors and saying, when can we come and talk to your, mm -hmm. at, at your service or yeah. at a, an event Right. There, where we can have a I'll table. Try to, I'll try to get you some right names after the worship service yeah. because people are there. They want to support 
kids in the city. Mm -hmm. They do. All you have to do is ask. But you need to be in a venue to do the ask. Mm -hmm. And the pastor, minister, whoever needs to understand what it's all about. And then they say, okay, um, you know, we have all of these events lined up. You can come in two months and speak on a Sunday morning mm -hmm. or, or have a table after church at a, this on the state right but um, there are also in some churches um, people who are over the education component Mount Olivet would be one of those churches and I believe the um, person over education is um, Minister <coughs> Winterborn I think that's Winterborn his name. Jones okay no one okay yeah that'd be a good person to call We'll talk. Oh. I know about all of it real well. So, yeah, okay, good. Uh, uh, other churches that you know of that you may go to that might be? The one that next to there is um, is it the AM, AME yeah. Zion. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Yeah, lots of educated, retired educators over there. I mean, if you go to a church, that's the best thing that you you're at the church you can be the person to talk to the the reverend minister whoever is their pastor <coughs> and say we, we 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 have this great opportunity for people in the <coughs> church to uh, work with kids in the 19th war uh, we just want to provide that opportunity and and tell the congregation about that um, when can we do it okay so do any of you belong to a church in the area? You'd be interested in doing that? I do, but I can't. I'm not going to say that I can be an active recruiter right now. I've got a couple of projects I've got to complete. But you okay. can, you, I mean, the so other what's, way. What's the church? Mount Olivet. Oh, Mount Olivet. Oh, you're at Mount Olivet. When I go. Okay. <laughs> well, hey, you know, Mount Olivet actually is... I love that church. Um, oh, no. Pastor, no, 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 no. But there's a history there. Pastor Harvey and I, <coughs> Reverend Harvey and I know each other. We've ridden bicycles together. Okay. Uh, Winterborne Jones and I have known each other for years. Uh, okay. um, Beverly Burrell Moore is oh, from yeah. that church, yeah. right? Yeah. Your Mayor Johnson's at that church. I mean, oh, yeah. that church is just full of educators. Yes, it's it is. just packed full. You go into, ch I've been to church there. My, I belong to Temple Birth Coast. We do a pulpit oh, yeah. exchange mm -hmm. once a year, right? So, so did you I've know been to the Reverend Leardrew Johnson? Hmm? Reverend Leardrew Johnson, did you know the former pastor? He started the ecumenical um, project between Mount Olivet and the Jewish community. Right. Years I, um, ago. I moved to Rochester 10 years ago, oh, so I kind of missed it. Yeah, yeah. it's great. Yeah. So, okay, okay, look, 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 I'd love to, I have spoken in front of Matt Olivet several times and okay. had tables there, so okay. time to do it again. Yeah, right. 